you have a bet now for who's for president, who's who you're endorsing, or you wouldn't endorse anyone yet? Or Basically, we're not going to accept someone from Davao City at all costs. Mm -hmm. And basically, the strongest one against that group of the administration is how I'm tempted to support. Arguably, some are better than others hmm, of, among the opposition. But they reach the point, the, the most qualified is not necessarily the strongest. So let's stop dreaming. We have to face reality and we're taking into consideration who is the strongest so we can change this administration. Mm -hmm. But right now, I'm happy to say that it seems that Pacquiao and Lenny are picking up very nicely. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe very strongly in the two of them. I just hope the two can come together and make some, some sort of a yeah, deal. Yeah. Okay. Uh, going, moving forward to uh, the millennial generation, you've, you've been around for many decades. Uh, how would you characterize the changes ever since with Cebu City as opposed to the 80s, the 90s, how, has, how would you describe the millennial generation? You know, this Facebook generation, millennials. Actually, I'll tell you something, no? Cebu City is really ahead of the country if you're talking in terms of modernization, and particularly in our culture and our ability to adjust to mm -hmm. globalization. That's always been our strength. Hmm? Uh, just follow me. We have a country that's head is stuck in the mud. We expect the world to adjust to us. The world will never adjust to us. This is what we want, okay? So you come here this way. So they don't come here, period. We're not the only place in the world to go to. We're losing out to every other place. But Cebu City has been a rather exception. And the reason, having studied Cebu for the longest time, has this unique ability of being the first to adjust to a changing worldwide situation. And that's what I call millennial thinking, you know, something new, the first to react. I'll give you an example. Let's go back 40, 50 years ago. Cebu discovered puka shells, shell craft. Mm -hmm. so nobody else figured it out. So us, the one was here, we're picking up shells all over Bohol, Negros, Mindanao, and exporting it and make millions of dollars in export to the States. But the puka shell business turned sour. So we go into to rattan. We're the first to adjust. Mm -hmm. Cebu City does not have any rattan. So we get rattan everywhere else and we're the ones who make the money. Then when the rattan ran out, we went into furniture. You know, this is the analogy I give, you know. Cebu is like a surfer. A <laughs> surfer who is waiting for the wave. He has no, we don't have a choice. You cannot demand where the wave will come from, what time it will come from, or how big it is. Whatever the wave is, you just decide whether you ride it or not. You say a wave, you say, let's ride it. We're very good at that. We're extremely good at that. We're kind of, that's why after rattan furniture, we went to regular furniture. Then after that, we went into the export processing zone. We became a leader. And after export processing zone, we're number one in call centers in the not only in the Philippines in the world, you know. Then you know, and then so this is this is what I mean. If you see, there is a certain common denominator, and that's the Cebuano millennial thinking that expands over the last fifty or sixty years. We have an uh, because we are not agricultural oriented, we're very service oriented. So we are the first when we see something changing globally. We just adjust to it. The rest of the country says, Hoy, you come here, you do it like this, you do it like that. Of course, they don't come. Mm -hmm. Here, says, that's what you want, that's what we'll build. You like rattan furniture, we'll make rattan furniture. <laughs> you like microchips, we'll do microchips. What do you want? We'll do it. Yeah. See? And, and so, this thing about millennials, that's really Cebu to me, Cebu City. We were like that all along. Now we're losing our edge because the others, from Manila and the others, are really beginning to catch up. With the advent, with the advent of 
the internet, huh? the whole world is catching up. If we're not very smart, we'll be the ones that will be left behind. Simply by standing still, the rest of the world is moving ahead. It will appear that we're actually going backwards. We have to maintain our lead. I understand you spent a lot of time in the U.S. Uh, before. You spent many years there. Yes. Uh, what was that experience like? And were you able to really apply your learnings there in becoming an effective mayor throughout your years here? Well, when I went to the States, I was already an adult. I was already a voter. So I understand not you, like you took I was up born economics and, and finance, right? More of an economics and finance background. Well, I, had, I took up agriculture here in the States. I ended up being a financial analyst. And then I got involved in real estate. But you're in a position where you have access to different information and you <clears> see <throat> different things and you talk to different people. So you sort of broaden your, the way you think. Perspective yeah. is wider. Yes, absolutely. Because when I come back here, I didn't notice that till I come back here that people are very biased in certain things. And we don't do it that way. We do it like this. Well, that's not the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. our, uh, uh, our ability to change is very, res is very suppressed. You know? Me, I'm crazy. You know? I want to do BRT. You know? What's BRT? I want to do the reclamation project. Do you know how to do reclamation project? Yeah, I can do that. Are you sure? Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> I can do it. I can do things other people, yeah. they, 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 they can't even imagine of what they can do. So, so this, these are things like, we invent, we invent things like night high school. It's not being done anywhere else. Mm -hmm. We invent things like long life, because we deliver medicines to the household. That's not even being done in the States. No? Mm -hmm. we, I, I believe that if you're focused enough, you can do things that other people think is impossible. Mm. You just concentrate on it. But I read up a bit on your biography. Uh, you weren't supposed to get into politics before you became mayor in no. 87. No. But you had to or yeah. you well, took on father, the challenge. You know, my father... Was, I understand you were in the States. You yeah, were yeah. supposed to have a life there. Yeah, I had the life there. But a lot of times when I go around the States, I, I somehow ask myself, this can be done in Cebu. This cannot be done in Cebu. This mm -hmm. can be done in Cebu. So when I started to come here after being away, I look around and said, yeah, we can do this. Yeah, we can do that. And then other people get threatened with me because they start to insult me by saying, who do you think you are? I said, why, what's wrong? Mm. What's wrong? You think you want to be mayor? I said, no. <laughs> but I want to do something for the city. See? So I started to attend uh, civic clubs. You know? To tell you frankly, I found it boring. Mm -hmm. Because they, I attended a few meetings in civic clubs. They talk about two hours to discuss a waiting shed. I said, why are we waiting two hours for waiting shed? Why don't we just build a waiting shed? Yeah. They discuss all the procedure and this and that, and they have to consult the architects for a waiting shed, you know? Just go build it, you know? <laughs> so somebody said, well, why don't you join the city council? Yeah, that I'd like to do, because at least I can, now we're talking on a bigger scale, I can contribute ideas, I'd really be excited to join the city council. Not as a job, just to be able to help the city. But then the powers that be said, no, we will not even allow you to join our slate. And they started to insult me, and other people tell me, said, why don't you run against those guys? You can beat them. I said, no, I can't beat them. But they kept postponing the election, so one thing led to the other. <laughs> I ended up in government. Um, yeah, well, you know, there's there's a lot of similarities between the U.S. and the Philippines, yeah. but there's a lot of dissimilarities. And sometimes, when you think you're the same, you're not. When you think you're not the same, you really are. You know, and you have to do. A, it's nice to do a reality check. You know? 
and see. And I, I like I like dealing with uh, I like dealing with with Americans because they don't beat around the bush. They're more and now, I mean, direct and that, straightforward. That's what, yeah, that's what I hear. They say it was very strict. I dispense with the formalities. No, you know, straight to the point. Right? You know, it's our it's our culture. To be, to, to be for nice example, when someone will tell me. Can I ask you for a favor, okay? My to me, that's so, that that's so silly. Why don't you just ask it? Anyone can ask me for a favor. It doesn't mean I will give it. But the, the mindset is, I have to ask permission just to ask you a favor. Why don't you just ask it? I'm <laughs> more like that. Yeah. kayo yeah. yeah. straightforward. Yeah. Is it okay if I ask you a question? Huh? Why don't you just ask the question? Why do you say, is it okay if I ask you a question? Just yeah. ask it. And some people are not used to that. So that's no one thing about in the States, you just get straight. You want something to say, say what you mean and mean what you say. That's it. And some people, why is he like that? I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. such a waste of time. I'm going to you, to you, to you, to you. Yeah, yeah. My grandma's like that. He'll talk endlessly. <laughs> and at the end, you don't even know what he's saying. What's his point? I don't know. <laughs> But you used to be allies, right, with Ram? Yeah. And yeah. Then there was. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah we used, all of them came from me. <laughs> yeah. La Bella, Alvin Garcia. What? Whatever. That's life, you know. But there's something strange about Filipino culture. Somehow, when when you get elected to a higher position, you think your IQ has doubled. That's not true. It stays the same. Yeah, <laughs> it's the it's same, you yeah. know. But because they're higher, they expect mean. that the thing they're saying is correctly. That's why you asked me a question earlier. I said, what do I think? I said, we're the same, okay? I can say what I think, but don't think it's anything special because when it comes to, like, what's going on in the pandemic, yeah. but I was, we read the same material, we have the same exposure.